he'll make you share some stuff you didn't even want to share. Amen. He'll make you reveal some stuff about you that you said you were going to take to your grave. Can I get some folk in here to know what I'm talking about? And God will see. He'll have you to see that person dealing in that that sin or that thing trying to take them out and literally stifle, you know, their life and try to make them, you know, lose hope and, and lose sight. And you see the person going through it and you know you got the testimony in you. He'll use you to go right at that moment and give them a message from the Lord and then seal it with your testimony. Come on, somebody give it to me. Amen. Somebody say, seal it with your testimony. Testimony. See, you don't have no reason. That's why the Holy Spirit, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews 10 that the Holy Spirit erases the guilty conscience. Do you know why he does that? He does that so you could freely share your testimony hmm. without holding your head down. Come on. Because if you share your testimony and you're doing it in shame and you know, in condemnation that you're not showing the power of our saving God. But when you say, this is what I what I was. Let me tell you what I used to do. Okay. Let me tell you where I used to go. Let me tell you how I was bound up in sin. Let me tell you how I used to live. Let me tell you about what, what used to go on in my life. But when you come to the point that you realize that that thing that you used to do was your task and now you got a testimony of how you came out of that. And you can tell about the strength of God. You can tell about the goodness of God. Come on. That's good stuff. Amen. Somebody say, seal it. Seal it. With your testimony. With your testimony. Because you're able to speak with conviction about God. See, if you if you go in and talk to somebody and you're evangelizing from a place about God that you don't know, you're not going to be as effective as you would be if you came from a place that you do know. I was listening to, I don't know if anybody saw this, but this week, I mean, last week, Eddie Long was on, um, on, on, on uh, Steve Harvey Steve show. Harvey show, show up. He was on the Steve Harvey show. And, and he, he shared, he said, you know, there was a time, I, in, in that mess I was in, I almost took my life. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I literally, started to kill myself. All right. I lost hope. He said I was in a dark place. All right. I was messed up. Anybody in here ever been in a dark place? Amen. He said, but you know what the good part about what I went through? Come on. He said the good part about what I went through is if I hadn't ever gone through it, I wouldn't be able to tell you that God truly is their keeper. That he is truly able to get you. He's truly able to regulate your mind and keep your mind. He said, now I know personally that God, Jesus, does save and that Jesus is able to keep us through our situation. Amen. I know it. I lived it. So, your testimony gives you an opportunity to say, now this is what I know personally. Man. Uh, What's been being personal. blessing? You being a witness. Amen. About my God. Oh my God. Amen. I know this. And I know when I tell you this, I hope you don't look at me crazy after I tell you my testimony. Yeah. But I need to give you this nugget so that you can come out of what you're going through. Ooh. Now, I'm not giving you my testimony for you to judge or use against me. But I'm giving you my testimony so that you can come out of what you're, coming, what you're going through right now. Yeah. I'm calling you out right now out of that situation. And I'm letting you know that I serve a God that's able to bring. I see what you're going through uh, as something that I've already been through. Yeah. Man. And I got the road map. And his name is Jesus. <laughs> I got the compass. And his name is Jesus. I have the direction. And his name is Jesus. And the GPS. I can tell you how to come come on. Come on. Amen. Yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you. Oh, somebody practice. Yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you. How to come out. How to come on out of here. Amen. Silly. 
Hey. With my testimony. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to give you the testimony. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God and the word was with God in the beginning. And that word is Jesus in the flesh. The Bible also says in Revelation that they overcame by the word. Who's the word? Jesus. How did they overcome? The word. And guess what? The testimony. So you got to be able to give them some word and seal it with the testimony. And when you do that, then you can just call yourself a prophet. Because I'm giving you a message Come on. for your current situation. Woo. Yeah. Come on. Hey. Y'all got a promotion today. Didn't you? <laughs> didn't you raise up a level in ministry you didn't even know you had? Come on. See, people want to make God hard, but he ain't hard. All he needs is a life to touch. All he needs is a life to change. And God will elevate you to place. Oh, my God. He'll take you to places that you never thought you would go. Oh, he's waiting on for you to yield everything. Somebody say everything. Everything. You didn't know you were going to come and get a promotion today. <laughs> and then he said, and some I called to be evangelist. Now, evangelists are people that are gifted to edify. They, 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 you, you ever ran across somebody that just, you talk to them, and I don't care how bad your day was going, but they walk up to you and they just make you feel good. I mean, they make you feel, you feel like you just been like, oh my God, I thought it was bad, but I just thank the Lord that for evangelists, uh, so-and-so to come by and I feel so much better than I feel. All y'all are evangelists because you should not be walking around with complaints. Come on. You need to be walking around with edification on your lips, telling people that the Lord is good. You need to always be lifting people up. Amen. Hey. And letting them know who they are and who promised you is faithful. Amen. Ooh. Don't worry about what you're going through. Don't yeah. think that it's not going to come to pass. Don't think that the promise is not going to come true. The one who promised is faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. He's faithful. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. He's faithful. The one who promised. The one who promised. Hallelujah. Hey. So we, an evangelist is one who edifies. They lift up the name of God. And, and you know what? They come and, and, and they, they have a special, unique way of when you're going through something. You know, evangelism, I mean, um, uh, um, yeah, it's not about just in this form. All right. You hear what I'm saying? It's not just in the walls of the church. Come on. True evangelism comes along. You know, it really happens. When we go outside, somebody say outside of the church. Uh, when we go outside, when we open the door and we see somebody that's downhearted, somebody that's going through, and you walk up to them and you let them know, what can I do to help? What are you going through? And you know, people are tired of folk walking up to them, telling them about Jesus, but they won't do anything to help in that person's situation. Jesus has called you to serve. Somebody say, I've been called to serve. I've been Somebody called say, to serve. I've been called to serve. Yep. So as an evangelist, my amen, specialty. as one who goes around and, and my edifies specialty. the saints, you got to serve. That's my specialty. And we so we so worried about serving ourselves. Hey, man. Come on, come on. We so worried about what we going to get out of. Uh-oh. Out. We don't take time <laughs> to serve. I was watching a video this morning. I was going I was going to show it this morning. I'm, I'm going to get that video. It was twenty dollars. Somebody say, "Pray for your pastor." She cheap. <laughs> 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 now I say pray for us because we need to tithe. Oh, oh. You didn't quit preaching, did you? <laughs> I wouldn't have to worry about buying a video, would I? <laughs> would I? I could have just bought it and not even worried about it. But that's another sermon. Okay. <laughs> and, it, and it showed this young man, he walked up, he was getting ready to get in his car. 
And uh, when he got ready to get in his car, he looked around, and it was another young man that had dropped out all his groceries. And so the young man turned around, and he looked, and he saw that he dropped the groceries. And then he turned around, and he stopped what he was doing, and he went over, and he helped the, the man put the groceries back in the bag. It was oranges. They were rolling all over and he helped them put them in the bag. He stopped what he's doing, what he was doing, and he went to help. Somebody said he stopped what he was doing, and he went to help. And some of us will not stop what we're doing. You see what I mean? And then the, the, the video went along to show how that one moment of connecting with the man, he changed, exchanged telephone numbers, then they met, they played basketball together, and then he invited them to lunch with some friends, and then the next time he came and showed them opening up a Bible, and the man kind of shining away from him, and then it showed him going back, and, and, and it was so powerful, then it showed the man uh, that he met that helped him, it showed him in introducing him to a young lady and it showed him and the young lady getting married and it showed them evangelizing and all that and then it went back to the beginning to show the young man look at the man that dropped the oranges and the groceries and then get in his car and it was showing the impact that we would have if we would only take a minute out our day to help Ooh. how we could connect we, you, we cannot grow the kingdom of God if we refuse to connect. That's, right, man. That's good. That's really good. We cannot do it, church. If we won't get involved, we can't grow. Ain't nobody want to be bothered with nobody that just got a bunch of words and no action. Mm -hmm. You say you love me, but if I need something, you can't do nothing for me. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Nobody, you know, if we're really going to reach, if we're going to really evangelize, if we're really going to grow the kingdom of God, we got to stop in our day and look and see who we can help. Amen. Mm. We got to look and see. Because that one moment of you giving a minute of your time, five minutes, and connecting with that person could change the direction of of their life. Imagine if when you were in the midst of some of your foolishness, someone would have took a moment and just stopped and looked at you and said, let me connect. Let me give my number. But what we do, look at that old folk. Look at them. They just, they just look at that. Yeah, they going on over Look. They just going on over there. And, and we don't want to get involved because we don't have time to get involved. And I want to tell you right now, that's the devil that got your 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 whole schedule full. Mm. Why would he do that? Why would the enemy fill your schedule? So you won't have time to eat back. Oh, that was good. Y'all are shot right now. <laughs> wow. He wants you just stretch for time. So that you don't have time for nobody but yourself. Uh oh. But somebody say he calls some to evangelize. You got to make time. And every last one of these offices that this Bible is talking about requires you giving up yourself. You notice that? Yeah. If you, and then the next one it says he calls some to be pastors and to teach pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service. Somebody say to prepare God's people. To prepare God's people for works of service. For works of service. That's what the church does. We prepare God's people for works. It ain't for the pastor to do all the work. The people got to be prepared to what? Work. Mm. That makes sense? Yeah. Makes plenty of sense. Because what would happen if we all took on the responsibility? I mean, seriously, took on the responsibility if everybody at Fresh Springs said, I am going to take this change agent mission seriously. I am going to, I'm literally going to dive into it with everything I have. And I'm not going to stop until I have changed somebody's life. Wow. And brought somebody to the kingdom of God. What would happen if we took that seriously? Good question. 
You know what we called this year in 2000, when 2016 came in, we celebrated and we said that 2016 was going to be the year of follow through for our church. You know what that means? That means if you start it, don't stop it till it's finished. Mm. Somebody say the year follow through. The year follow through. 